So I'm still working on this 1986 Honda VFR 700F. And despite all the other issues that I've found on the way to get to this point, I do need to find out if this thing is actually going to be worth trying to restore by opening up the valve train, checking out the clearances, and checking out the state of the uh, cam lobes. And what I found is that everything looks really good. And this thing, uh, so very exciting actually to see the gear driven cams inside of it. This was actually much easier to set the valve clearances on this VFR 700 versus my VF500F. Just the clearances to get to the lock nut tappets was a whole lot easier on here. And what I did find was that these valves were actually damn close to being in clearance. Like I adjusted a fair amount of them, but none of them were over one 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 thousandth of an inch out of spec. And so the intakes need to be 0.05 and the exhaust 0.07. And nothing was over a thousandth out. So the gear driven cams, very cool. So all you gotta do to uh, get into here, well, once you get the valve covers off and whatnot, you don't have to take the stator cover off or anything. You can spin the engine this way and you wanna spin it in the direction of travel and it's, uh, well, it's all very neat. It's all way cooler than actually, you know, looking at a chain driven cam system. Uh, you get your gear driven cams. So I've been going through oiling everything up and now I've got everything adjusted and we are in tolerance. Quite frankly, this is very simple compared to shim under bucket. Shim under bucket just re requires a lot more thinking involved, but they last a whole lot longer. Uh, whereas this lock nut probably does need to be checked probably, I'm gonna guess the manual says like 6,000 miles. I'm gonna guess you're gonna be fine. Just go to like 10,000 miles, but very exciting to see that that is actually in a decent state. So I'm going to have to get the valve covers back on and then put the radiator back on and I'll get it filled up back with coolant. The coolant that I drained out looked pretty good. I keep looking at this bottle. I had this bottle for a while and I can't find any indication that this has silicates in it at all. So I've been looking for an excuse to use this up and you just gotta make sure that you use ethylene glycol without silicates in it cause that'll rip up the um, water pump seals. So I'll get that going. I've been going around with my little new little squirt gun to make sure that there's oil and everything. This thing's kind of fun. Never had one of those before. The spark plugs that I pulled out were DPR-8 EA9s. And the ones I'm going to be putting in are DPR-9 EA9s. These are for standard climate. These were for colder climate. Um, I guess it's... I, I don't know why these were in it, but but they were in it. They look... Actually, they look pretty good, all things considered. I gap these. The tolerance on them says just 0.3 to 0.4 and I sent them all to point, oh sorry, 0.03 to 0.04. I sent them all to 0.034 thousandths of an inch. So those will be going in soon. Radiator looks honestly pretty good. Um, this piece was a little bit uh, mangled right there, but that won't be too much of an issue. I'll go over on my valve caps, paint the surfaces, get those reseated. Then I get to the carburetor, which was a, Man, this has evidence of just a catastrophe uh, against motorcycles. Somebody came in here and did some crazy-ass shit. So I've got these rebuilt. I don't have all the parts. I don't have the fuel tubes yet to put them back together, so I can't actually try to find out if this bike is running today. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take me like a week to figure out how to put this thing back together anyway. But I'm glad I checked the float heights because they should all be at 7 millimeters, and three of them were, and one of them was at 5 millimeters. Where the issue is is that if I look at this one, see how there's this little tube here. This is on the plenum side right here. This is a four and a half millimeter outer diameter and a two millimeter inner diameter. On this one, it was just ripped out, which is really neat. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a repair that I can do and find another four and a half millimeter with two and millimeter inner diameter tube to actually make a permanent repair. I've been talking to Joe at V4 Dreams and he has gotten bikes, he's seen this before, I was surprised to hear that this is fairly common from people just trying to mash things together or rip things out. And he's gotten a bike to run with two of these missing before, but I'm gonna to try to figure out a uh, more permanent repair on that. The other thing that is a major issue on these carburetors is that I think they didn't really understand how to get these things to go together. And this piece here, which goes to the sink screws, this thing was bent all the way down 
and I think they just couldn't figure out how to get the linkage to work correctly. And now I've done a fairly deep, you can see how it's still bent. I've done a decent job of trying to bend it back into uh, a way that will work. And there is a little bit of give because this will made up with this thing on this, ay, 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 on this side, sort of like this. And well, there's a little bit of give because of the sink screw, God, and you can see this one's bent too. So that's gonna be a really difficult part of actually getting this to work. But once I got the carburetor parts here, I'll, I'll figure that one out. I do have somebody on VFR World uh, offered to sell me a spare set of carburetors if I can't do this, if the damage was too much. Like when I had the float bowls off and whatnot, there's evidence of somebody just trying to rip out the enrichener circuit and whatnot. It's just, man, if, you, if you're trying to figure something out on a carburetor and you're forcing it, well, you're doing something wrong. So, yeah, that's that's not going to be too much fun. And one of the other things I did is that I rebuilt the petcock on here, which with a uh, parts unlimited kit. Which these things were originally riveted on. So taking that thing out, you actually have to drill out the rivets and whatnot. And the instructions seem sort of intimidating, but they're really easy to follow. So now I do have a working petcock on here. Well, I can't say that with 100% certainty. I haven't fuel tested it yet, but we should be good to go. So. We will, uh, I think one more thing is to just get that radiator back on, get, get some coolant in it, not that it's gonna be firing anytime soon, but uh, then I need to do a compression test. If the compression test works out, and we find that we got decent numbers, and I squirt a whole bunch more oil in there, maybe, and, and if the starter works, and I can get the carburetor going, maybe this bike will fire. Man, I'm still wallowing in the defeat of Michigan by TCU whipping our asses the other day. But as an adopted Green Wave fan from three years ago, roll damn wave. And not gonna be a compression test today because I keep blowing the ignition fuse anytime I put it to on and then I hit the run button, it immediately pops. The ignition fuse and i knew that that was always going to be an issue on this bike actually i don't even have the thing in there right now but i always knew that was going to be an issue on this bike because well because of the rat's nest of electrical that i've got now i was looking at some of the few records that i've got of this thing and one of them that was replaced was this 35851 mf5-751 which is the solenoid switch so apparently there was an issue with this in the past and I'm probably experiencing the same issue. So I guess I didn't get this bike because I thought it was going to be easy. I was just hoping I'd uh, at least get past this part. But now it's time to uh, buckle down, put my brain to work, and maybe in like three weeks I will uh, figure out how to get this starter going. I know that I can, there is a service you can do to the starter. I'm going to have to pull that starter out. I'm going to have to clean up the brushes and everything on it. And then the other thing I'm gonna have to do, just because of all the loose electrical wires around this whole thing, I'm gonna have to make sure that I just don't have an obvious short circuit somewhere. I don't see anything super obvious right now, but there has to be something that's just immediately popping it. So onward and upward, project bike. Uh, you watched this far. Thanks for watching.